Hi, I'm sitting here in New Zealand. It's on the globe behind me. That's New Zealand at the top of the world, surrounded by water. Uh, but that's not where I'm from originally. I uh, moved here about 20 years ago. Uh, here on this map, uh, of course, this is New Zealand. Google puts things with the north at the top, which is probably what you're used to. I came here from Calgary in Canada, the University of Calgary, where I was for many years. I used to be head of computer science at the University of Calgary, but originally I'm from Belfast, Northern Ireland, which is here in the United Kingdom. So my accent actually is Northern Irish, not New Zealand. This is not a New Zealand accent. Okay, we're going to talk here in the last lesson of class three about another machine learning method called the nearest neighbor or instance based machine learning method. When people talk about rote learning, they just talk about remembering stuff. They're talking about just remembering stuff without really thinking about it. And uh, it's the simplest kind of learning. So a nearest neighbor implements rote learning. To classify, it just remembers the training instances. And then to classify a new instance, it searches the training set for one that's most like the new instance. So the representation of the knowledge here is just a set of instances. It's a kind of lazy learning. The learner does nothing until it has to do some predictions. And confusingly, it's also called instance-based learning. Nearest neighbor learning and instance-based learning are the same thing. So here's just a little picture of instance space, two-dimensional instance space. And we've got the blue points and the white points, uh, two different classes, you know, yes and no, for example. And then we've got an unknown uh, instance, the red one. We want to know which class it's in. So we simply find the closest instance in each of the classes and see which is closest. So in this case, it's the blue class. So we would classify that red point as though it belonged to the blue class. And if you think about this, that's uh, implicitly drawing a line between the two clouds of points. It's a straight line here, the perpendicular bisector of the line that joins the two closest points. So the nearest neighbor method produces a linear decision boundary. Actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It produces a piecewise linear decision boundary with a bunch of, uh, sometimes a bunch of uh, little linear pieces of the decision boundary. So the trick, of course, is what do we mean by most like? We need a similarity function. And uh, conventionally, people use the regular distance function, the Euclidean distance, which is the sum of the squares of the differences. Well, it's a, the differences between the attributes. It's the square root of the sum of the squares. But we're, since we're just comparing two distances, we don't need to take the square root. Well, you might use the what's called the Manhattan or city block distance, which is the sum of the absolute differences between the attribute values. Of course, I've been talking about uh, numeric attributes here. If attributes are nominal, we need uh, the difference between uh, different attribute values. And uh, uh, conventionally, people just say the distance is 1 if the attribute values are different, and 0 if they're the same. It might be a good idea with nearest neighbor learning to normalize the attributes so that they all lie between 0 and 1, so the distance isn't skewed by some attribute that happens to be on some gigantic scale. OK, uh, what about noisy instances? If we, get, if we have a noisy data set, then by accident we might find uh, an incorrectly classified training instance as the nearest one to our test instance. Now you can guard against that by using k nearest neighbors, say 3. k might be 3 or 5. And you look for the 3 or the 5 nearest neighbors and choose the majority class amongst those when classifying an unknown point. So that's the k nearest neighbor method. And in Weka, it's called IBK, instance-based learning with parameter k. And it's in the lazy class. So let's uh, open the glass data set, which is here. Go to classify and choose the lazy classifier IBK. And uh, well, let's just run it. And do we get a Accuracy of uh, 70, 70 percent, 70.6 percent. The model is not really printed here because there is no model. It's just a set of training instances. We're using tenfold cross-validation, of course. Let's change the value of k. So this knn, this k value here, 
uh, is set by default to 1, the number of neighbors to use. So we'll change that to say 5 and run that. And in this case, we get a slightly worse result, 67.8% with K as 5. This is not such a noisy data set, I guess. If we change it to, say, 20, and run it again, we get 65% uh, accuracy, slightly worse again. So if we had a noisy data set, we might find that the accuracy figures improved as K got a little bit larger. But then it would always start to decrease again if we set k to be an extreme value close to the size of the whole data set. Then we're taking the distance of the test instance to all of the points in the data set and averaging those, which will probably give us something close to the baseline accuracy. I mean, here, if I set k to be a ridiculous value like, say, 100, I'm going to take the 100 nearest instances and average their distance average their classes, we get an accuracy of 35%, which I think is pretty close to the baseline accuracy for this data set. Let me just uh, find that out with 0R. The baseline accuracy is indeed 35%. So nearest neighbor is a really good method. It's often very accurate. Uh, it can be slow, um, and simple implementation would involve scanning the entire training data set to make, e make each prediction, because we've got to calculate the distance of the unknown test instance from all of the training instances to see which is the closest. But there are more sophisticated data structures that can make this faster, so you don't need, don't need to scan the whole data set every time. It assumes all attributes are equally important. and. Uh, if that wasn't the case, you might want to look at schemes for selecting attributes or weighting attributes, depending on their importance. If we've got noisy instances, then we can use a majority vote over the k nearest neighbors, or we might weight instances according to their prediction accuracy. Or we might try and identify reliable prototypes, one for each of the classes. This is a very old method. Statisticians have used k nearest neighbors since the 1950s, and there's an interesting theoretical result that if the number of training instances approaches infinity and k also gets larger in such a way that uh, k over n becomes zero, but k also approaches infinity, the uh, error of uh, the k nearest neighbor method approaches a theoretical minimum error for that data set. So there's a theoretical guarantee that with a huge data set and large values of k, you're going to get good results from nearest neighbor learning. There's a section in the text, section 4.7, on instance-based learning. Uh, this is the last lesson of class 3. Off you go and do the activity, and I'll see you in class 4. Bye for now.